Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show we're going to start part one of however many parts it takes uh, to build one of these and that would be a folding chair slash stool. So um, it's kind of an experimentation uh, video for me. I'm not sure how this one's going to turn out and I'm also not sure how the project is going to turn out but either way whether it be through triumphs or through failures somebody's going to learn something. So sit back and let's check out part one of this build tutorial. So I've had my eye on one of these for a long time. The idea has always been there to make one. I just never really got around to it. And I ended up finding some plans online. Um, they're rather old plans and they've been copied, scanned, what have you, so many times that they're barely legible. But I think that I have enough information that I can get a good idea and carry on with the build. Um, so I don't know how many parts this video is going to be. Uh, I'm going to take you guys along for the whole ride and hopefully it'll be a good one and may inspire you guys uh, to try your own. But uh, I'll post victories, I'll post accidents, whatever happens in this video. It's an experiment, so let's give it a whirl. And the first thing we're going to start off with is a quarter inch thick piece of hardboard and uh, I'm going to start some layout because we really need to start making some profiles for the uprights of this chair. Well the reason I'm using quarter inch hardboard is uh, I know you're going to be shocked but I want to make templates. So the plan, plan I use that term loosely here, um, that I have actually marks out the profiles on a one inch by one inch grid and that's not uncommon in woodworking to use a grid to lay things out to get scale correct or what have you so I'm gonna start off by marking out a one inch by one inch grid on this board and I think I'm gonna need it uh, five inches wide and uh, I think it's 33 long so I'm just going to go ahead now, and again with my Ankara, love this thing, uh, I'm going to mark out my grid. Well that quickly and that easily, I have five inches <laughs> laid out like that. I still have to do the one inch uh, increments across, but you saw how easy that was and maybe some of you guys now might get it why it is that I love these things so much but what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to mark with a tape measure uh, across and uh, I'm going to use a square and do the rest of these just because uh, that's what I want to do so I think what I may do actually is start with the anchor as far as I can and then use the tape measure Well we've got our grid drawn out here and we're going to be starting from the base of the side upright and working our way up. And the first thing we need to do is to mark a line from our three inches on our grid uh, down to the edge here on a four degree angle. So I've uh, set my bevel at four degrees and of course I've started here and mark that angle. Our next step here would be to mark the edge of the upright from the edge of this three inch mark here going this way and from what I can decipher of the plans it's 105 degrees from the edge of this four degree mark around. So we basically need to calculate what that angle will be. So just throwing a little bit of math in there, if it is 105 degrees 
from our four degree angle around that means from this 90 degree surface right here it would be four degrees plus 105 which gives us 109 okay so hang on with me here so we have 109 degrees from our 90 degree edge let me just move this board over a little bit so you can see it better on film from this 90 degree edge around to the line that we we will require will now be 109 degrees so if we come straight up we have 90 degrees subtract that from our 109 and we have 19 degrees so if we carry on from this 3 inch mark beyond the 90 19 degrees we should have the correct angle that will give us 105 between this point and where we need it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that out. Okay, some of these measurements are starting to mess with my head, but what we have is I've set my bevel back to the four degrees and what we've got here is uh, seven inches up from the bottom there's going to be a dado cut and the dado runs parallel to that four degrees and those are for the steps of this stool so I'm gonna mark those out and this is the one good thing about the uh, the grid here is that I, I don't really have to think about it, I can just count. And I know that I've got seven inches across, so just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And um, I can just hold my bevel there and mark it at seven degrees. Sorry, at four degrees. And there's my one line now for my dado. Now I have to measure over another three quarters of an inch and uh, I'll mark another one. And that will be the thickness of our first step of the dado. So there's a mark at three quarters of an inch and we will line up our bevel just like that and we will mark the second line of our dado and there it is right there and then of course there will be another seven inches over so we can again count over one two three four five six seven and we will just add another three quarter inch dado mark right there there's the first one and then we'll measure over three quarters of an inch just like that and we're going to mark it again just like that all right so now we're going to move on to try to mark out some of this arch that we've got of this step now that we have the base angles here and we have this one dado and this one dado marked so let's get into marking some of these arches for those of you who don't know this is called a flexible curve and I'll just hold it up there it's uh, they're available in any uh, art store or you know um, anyway what they are is basically a ruler edge that can be bent and shaped to whatever you want and it comes in handy when you're laying out some of these curves because you can get an idea and look at it before you draw it down but what we've got here now is I've scribbled out this whole top row because I've added accidentally I put in a fifth inch row and it's really messing me up because I only need four so I've also gone across 
and I've put these X's here for pivotal points in this arch. This one here being the start point. And then according to this little kind of graph, this arch is down almost at the three quarter mark and then starts to work his way back up. And you can see how I'm just kind of working this here and you, I've got the arch there. Uh, and it works its way gradually back up and at this second X here, um, which is actually one, two, three, four, five, six inches over, this one is three inches in, then six inches over, it pretty much levels out and it comes up to that four inch line and stays pretty much steady there until we get over to this next X which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches over again, at which point uh, it starts to pivot its way down. So I'm just going to kind of lay this out. And this, of course, is, is just kind of a rough layout. As you sand things and shape it, this is the whole point of making this template is so that you get a rough idea. If you're happy with the template, you'll be happy with your finished product. So I'm just holding this here in place and drawing my line across. Um, a second set of hands would be helpful with this. I don't have one today, but that's okay. And there we go. There is my line here. I know that this is very difficult to see, but that's our first pivot. Our, our, our first arch. Our next one comes from down in this corner here and does a gradual curve all the way over to the far end and I'm gonna have to check the so-called drawings and see where it ends here. Five, six, seven, eight, five, at 26 inches over is where it arches over and then meets up down at this bottom edge here again. So we got three and then seven is 10 and then another seven is 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. How many did I say? I forgot. I'll check that and I'll be back. So as I said before, the extra hands really help in this process, but uh, I've used some clamps and hopefully that's going to work for me. So it was at the 26 inch mark. I've marked out this flexible curve here and marked it and bent it where I want it or where I think I want it. And then I've clamped it in place and I'm just marking out the arch now. And uh, once I get it all marked, we'll see how it looks. And again, you have to remember uh, this is a rough layout of this and once we're done all the layout we're gonna really shape it up on the sander to get it going nice and smooth and it's a little off here that I can see and um, the curve is, is, is not too bad but it could use some improvement and we're gonna work on that as we go along so <clears throat> I'm giving you the general idea now of how to use the grid. Um, you you want to look at your little mini layout like this one. There it is. And uh, basically by counting squares and drawing what you see in each square you'll end up with something that looks hopefully not as quite as messy as this one. Exactly. Anyway. All right. So I'm going to carry on here and I'm going to finish drawing out this profile and then I'm going to come back and uh, we'll show you what happens next here. Okay, so I have the one profile marked out and I'm far from done. Uh, this is taking a lot longer than I thought and I'm sorry if the beginning of this video bored you guys but I think it's imperative to show you what goes on and how to go about marking this out and um, it is time consuming but well worth it. 
And I just want to go through some of the tools that I used here to mark this out. Uh, this little guy right here, French Curves. Um, I used that on the top of the backrest to get the curves that I wanted to make it so that it looked the way that I liked it. Um, an adjustable bevel and uh, this is a great little unit for uh, marking out angles and repeatability and uh, of course I have an angle guide as well that I use in order to set it up. Um, sometimes I get ahead of myself and I don't really trust my angles and that's where this little baby comes in and that would be my Incra protractor and I use that of course to mark out the different angles and I did verify the four degrees um, that I was marking out I think four times before I would actually mark it down so Incra protractor um, as well I used a variety of my Incra rules my 18 inch and my 6 inch and uh, of course the other thing I spoke about was this little guy here the uh, flexible curves and uh, this thing does work really well and it can help you out in the shop um, when it comes to laying out and of course because I didn't have enough hands spring clamps and uh, it helped out to, to mark out the profile of this side piece and of course now I have to go ahead and cut this piece out I've gone ahead and marked out the smaller leg as well. I don't know how well you can see that, probably not at all. But I've taken extra care to mark these out properly and that's going to pay off in the long run. But for now I need to take this over to the table saw and start cutting these things out. And you may be wondering why the table saw. And the reason for that is that those first angles that we drew of four degrees and then 105 and then down at the smaller leg which I did off camera is 10 degrees and then another 105 after that um, they're imperative that they're correct because those will be the angles that later on will mesh together to make this whole project work so we're going to use our miter gauge and uh, cut it using that and get the proper angles on our templates because as I've told you 150 times any imperfections on your template is going to transfer to your final product so we're going to take this over and we're going to cut these out um, and get our angles cut correctly well if you remember on our initial piece we had these funny little angles down here at the bottom and this smaller one here was four degrees off of this surface and then there was a 105 degree angle difference or radius between these two and when we calculated it out that would put this one 19 degrees off of the 90 mark so with that being said we've got our miter fence set at 19 degrees and we need to lop off this one little corner now the problem here of course is that trying to do it like this this is one of the most dangerous things I think I've seen because there is no support there's just not enough support for this long piece here to cut off that little corner and the way that I'm going to overcome that is I'm going to use my resaw fence for my bandsaw and we're going to clamp this on to our uh, miter fence and you can see here now we have a lot more support and this isn't going to wobble around while we're trying to cut that little tiny corner off. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this down and just take that little corner off of our uh, template and we'll be good to go. see we've got our 19 degree angle and uh, it's nice and clean and that's the way it should be especially for a template so now we can set up our miter fence to cut this four degree angle 
but we won't need our resaw fence for this one because there's plenty of support on this long end of the board so we can just set up our uh, miter fence at four degrees and lop that piece off. And there you can see we've got our 19 degree angle cut and our 4 degree now cut providing us with 105 between the two and that template is right on so uh, that's fantastic so now there is no more angled parts to be cut on this this is all um, basically either scroll saw or bandsaw work but we do have our smaller uh, section piece and we're going to cut that using the same method. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the angles for that. And uh, for this one it's just a little bit different in that these end angles are actually 10 degrees, not 4. And this one here is a 10 degree angle. So with that being said, um, there's still 105 between these two angles. So what it, all it does really is alters what angle we cut this at. So again, if this here is at 10 degrees and this one between them is 105, so from 90 to the 105 is 15 plus our 10 degrees over here, that means this is a 25 degree miter cut on this side from this 90 degree face. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in the same method that we cut the last one and then I'll come back. I just want to illustrate here the importance of proper layout and doing your templates properly. What I've got here is the back upright of the chair. This is the floor. And I've got this piece of hardboard here. This is going to represent our floor surface. So basically our chair will sit flush here on the floor and you can see that we've got this angle here. This is our leg, our front leg of our chair, and that will sit flush on the floor. Now in between these two pieces, there is an angled piece that goes down this way, and there is another angled support piece that comes up from the back, up this way, and they meet in the middle. So to illustrate that, I've got this piece. So if I hold this tight to the floor and set my piece in there at the correct angle, just like so, and we see this is a very tight joint here, we're tight on the floor, then if we sit our front legs flat on the floor and just slide them in, well, look at that. Can you see that here, what we've got? I'm just going to adjust the camera here so that we can get a better view. And hopefully you'll understand what I'm talking about. We've got a tight joint here and a tight joint up here. Now there will be other components, of course, to this that will come together this way. But so far, from what we can see, even though we've got 4 degrees here, 10 degrees here, 10 here, 19 here, 25 uh, on this one. Everything is coming together and it's all due to the importance of taking your time in the initial layout. So now we're going to go over to the scroll saw and I'm going to cut out the patterns for these legs. I'd just like to point out that it's in cases like this where having an Excalibur 30 inch where the uh, EX30 really shines. I mean, um, being able to cut this depth of a piece is absolutely fantastic. But for those of you who don't have access to or have a 30 inch Excalibur. Um, of course, at this point in time, you would have to use either a jigsaw 
with a fine blade or a hack, uh, sorry, a use your band saw. Any method you want is just fine. I'm not even too concerned at this point about following the lines perfectly because I am going to tune this up on the uh, on the oscillating and the uh, disc sander. So I know that it's not perfect and you may be watching saying it's going off of the lines, but again, I'm going to tune this up later. So I'm going to carry on and uh, cut out these templates and I'm going to fire some dust collection onto the oscillating sander and we're going to clean them up. And uh, once we get them cleaned up, that's pretty much our day. So there's a couple extra pieces here which are the seat braces for these legs and I've cut them in a mock-up here out of the MDF and the reason I've cut them is basically we need to check and make sure that everything's coming together. I don't want to continue on until I've got the profile the way that I like it and I know that it's going to work. Um, I've shaped these with the sanders you saw in the last segment and I'm, I'm happy with the way that they came out. So now it's a matter of just testing how this all goes together. So with this one seat brace here, this one is measured at 16 and um, 5 eighths. And I can already see here that we've got a, a problem. There's something that's not quite lining up. Um, but then of course the back, we have this other seat brace that goes here and this one is measured at 15 and 3 quarter and it sits kind of like this and I can definitely see that we have a bit of an issue here because there's a platform that sits right here in this spot and that should be 3 quarters of an inch thick and I'm up at an inch and a quarter so there's something not right here um, and this is why we do mock-ups so <clears throat> It looks like this piece, if I was a betting man, I'd say that this piece here is too long. And um, it should be 16 and 5 eighths tip to tip. And if I look at this here, yeah, see I'm at 17 and a quarter. 17. Somebody buggered up and I can see here that to this bottom edge here is 16 and 5 eighths. And in reality it should be to the tip. So instead of measuring to this point at 16 and 5 eighths like I need it, I measured here and now I have a piece that's too long. Well, better too long than too short. So I'm gonna go take this over the table saw, cut it to the correct length, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna check this mock-up and I'll sort of give you an idea of how this is gonna work. So I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I have my mock-up done here, and uh, indeed that piece was too long, and I cut it to the proper length, and then after I assembled it all again, this leg here was about uh, 3 sixteenths too long, and I've adjusted the template accordingly, and uh, I checked back on the plans, and it turns out that uh, it was my error as well, but... The plans, of course, didn't have the measurements. I was in the ballpark and I did all right with it, so I'm happy with that. And now we have uh, three quarters of an inch now of the gap here, which is right on the money. That's where that little platform will go. Um, so the way that this is going to work now is this is the back of the seat running here. There will be a three quarter inch platform here for the chair that will be hinged at this point. Sorry, at this point. And what's going to happen is uh, this little platform here will be sitting on the ground and <clears throat> when this gets hinged up around there will be an inch and a half gap here because of course the platform from here back, three quarters of an inch and here back, will come around and sit on top of each other. So I'm just going to put some 
setup blocks there for an inch and a half just to simulate it. And of course, this piece here, it's kind of hard to do on a mock-up and show you guys, but this piece will now hinge around this way and will sit just like this. And again, this is just a mock-up to see. And you can see here <clears throat> that it looks like it's going to sit all right. We're going to have to really check it. It kind of looks like what we may have here is that this piece um, right here may be too long. And I may actually have to trim that. And I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to trim this to the angle to match these ones because now this is going to be hitting the floor. But for now I'm going to leave it and you can see now that there will be steps in these areas now for you to climb up. So it's kind of a cool design and we're getting there but for now the templates are finished and uh, we can see that our angles are correct. I'm going to go through now with a sharpie or something a little more permanent than pencil and just mark down the cutting angles on these pieces so that when I actually go to cut my real one I'm not fumbling around trying to figure out uh, what to cut on the table saw but uh, yeah definitely that end angle up there needs to be cut to match this angle down here why it doesn't show that on the uh, original plan I don't know I don't know, but that's why we do the mock-up. So, there you go. I wasn't content enough just to leave it alone and uh, adjust it later. Um, if the template's not right, nothing is right. So, I've made adjustments to the angle of the top of the back of the chair. And uh, so I've got this set up again in our mock-up and I'll just check in again three quarters thickness of this gap right here which is perfect because that is that thickness of the platform and again when this thing spins around and we'll just put our inch and a half setup block spacers there so that we know we have the right thickness I will take our floor and line this up so we can see how this is going to hinge and when this hinges like this then of course this piece will be here just like this and if we take our mock-up floor we can see now that everything lines up on the floor so now this now is is presumably correct so hopefully that's got it straightened up and uh, now we can move on with the rest of the build and that's all she wrote for this week's video guys uh, it was a long one I apologize for the length but there's a lot of information here this was a full day's work of measuring marking out laying out the grids doing the curves doing the test fits there's a lot of information there and I had a hard time compressing it to the half an hour that I did and I may have left out some really important stuff but who has that much time to sit at a computer and watch these videos Hopefully in the 30 some odd minutes that this video became um, You guys are going to be able to pull out pockets of information that are going to help you if you should decide uh, to build your own and um, Like I said across that bottom ticker that I ran there earlier in the video if you guys google those images and uh, You can follow the page to find the same plans that uh, that I'm using and uh, follow along with the video and by all means try your own guys next week we're going to get into of course the resawing of the stock and uh, we're going to start making these profile pieces uh, for this chair slash stool and um, we're going to get more into the woodworking aspect of it so stay tuned we'll see you next week with yet another woodworking video